So in this video we're going to be taking a look at the JBC soldering station I have here. I'm going to be going over its features and I'll be telling you whether I think you should be spending your hard earned money buying the soldering station. For comparison I'll also be comparing it to my previous daily driver the Miniwear TS80P soldering iron. So let's get into the video. Here we have the raw and elusive mechatronic Neanderthal. To attract a mate, this young single male must construct a functioning circuit. Unfortunately for this young male, he isn't using a custom printed circuit board, so there is only one way this can end. Oh dear. Thankfully this won't happen to you, because you can order a custom printed circuit board from JLCPCB. Starting from as little as $2 for 5 PCBs, they have fast production time and offer a wide range of design options and colours to choose from. So why don't you try out JLC PCB for your next project. You can tell by the plain cardboard box and subtle marketing, this is marketed towards professionals rather than to look glamorous on a retail store shelf, which makes me feel like this is something special to unbox. In the box you'll find a user manual, handpiece, power cord and of course the station itself. My station didn't come with any soldering iron tips so I purchased mine separately. The handpiece's soft grip feels excellent to hold. The outside of the cable is made from high temperature silicone and the handpiece plugs into the station which allows for easy replacement in the future should the need arise. JBC also include a flexible cable holder that can be mounted onto either side of the station. At the back of the station you'll find a fused power switch and socket, USB port for firmware updates, a fume extractor socket, an earth fuse, tool socket, and lastly a word which I'm probably going to mispronounce, an equip potential socket. The station holds up to four iron tips. Located just below is the tool changer, allowing you to hot swap tips while they are still hot. The holder angle can be adjusted and features a sleep mode when the handpiece is placed back into the holder. The station includes a brass wall holder with a silicon splatter guard and a separate silicone sponge holder for cleaning the iron. Powering on the station, the iron immediately heats up to a programmable sleep temperature. Scrolling through the menu, pretty much every setting you'd want on a soldering station is here and is customizable, so I won't be boring you by going through every setting in detail. Using the left and right buttons you can choose from one of three programmable temperature presets. As soon as you pick up the handpiece it quickly heats up to working temperature. The sleep function will prolong tip life which is a good thing since most tips will cost you around 30 US dollars at least at the time of filming this. The grip to tip distance is impressively short. Despite this, for the entire time I've been using the station, I've never felt the handpiece heat up. 
Even when compared to the TS-80P, the JBC has a much shorter grip to tip distance. Maximum power output from the JBC is a mind numbing 130 watts, so it's hardly fair to compare this iron to the TS-80P which is a humble 30 watts, but we have to have something to compare against. Anyway, let's move on to what it's like to use. Now I could show you what it's like to solder small fiddly components, or do reflow work on the smallest SMD components, but let's be honest, you didn't click on this video to see that. Instead, you want to see what a 130 watt lightsaber iron feels like to use. Regular viewers will remember this test where I take a piece of copper tubing, solder a wire to it, and see how long it takes each iron to melt the solder and drop the ring. In an attempt to keep things on the level, both irons are using similar sized chisel tips. Starting with the TS-80P, it takes around 10 seconds and the test was repeated a total of 3 times to establish an average time between all the runs. Between each test the ring was allowed to cool back down to room temperature. Now it's time for the JBC. Obviously it shouldn't surprise you that the JBC won that test easily. And for giggles, I repeated this test, this time with the big boy chisel tip. The display has a power percentage bar to indicate how much power you're using in real time. This soldering station will handle anything you can throw at it. Want to tin a 2 gauge cable like it's butter? No problem. How about reflowing the heavy tinned traces on my induction heater? Yep, too easy. No matter how small or big the job is, this iron will do it. Plus it heats up so fast, a K-type probe with my meter can't update fast enough to accurately track the temperature in real time. According to the display, there is often a 5 degree overshoot, however it recovers so quick I doubt anyone will care, and perhaps a firmware update would correct the slight overshoot anyway. Safe to say, if you can justify the price tag, you won't be disappointed by this JBC soldering station. So final thoughts. 
Well, let's be honest, this is not a fair comparison between these two irons. They're in two completely different price points aimed at two completely different consumer markets. Now, if you're a home gamer, you're soldering or repairing the occasional circuit board, you're soldering light to medium gauge wire, then really the TS-80P is a good option. It offers great value for money. However, if you're a professional or you're soldering heavy gauge wire or circuit boards with inbuilt uh, surface mount heat sinks, then the performance and power output the JBC offers might be your only solution for those tricky jobs. So really, both these irons are winners in their own respective categories in my book. Now recently I did a poll asking you if you like background music or no background music in my videos, and the majority said no background music. This is the first video where I haven't put any background music in, so why don't you let me know down in the comment section, did you love it or did you hate it? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, smash that like button, it helps me out massively. Also consider subscribing for more future videos just like this. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for making videos like this possible, and I will see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.